देखो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक आई हैव बीन वांटिंग टू टॉक अबाउट इट सिंस द समर डेज दिस वन गाय फ्रॉम केरला कॉल्ड मी अप आई टोल्ड यू द स्टोरी इन द क्लास नो दे वन गाय कॉल्ड मी अप ही वाज इंक्वायरिंग अबाउट हिज कुलदेवता you can we know kulu devatas from astrology he was a student actually what is the difference between kula devata and ishta devata the ishta devata karlun you can choose kula devata is chosen by ancestor ancestors oh. have been worshiping it before okay kula means lineage so basically what we believe that the ancestor is born because of a blessing of a deity and then everyone in the lineage continues to worship that deity so that is family level everyone in the family since last four or five generations have been worshiping the deity so i talked so i told him basically kul devata are many they have multiple names and they differ from area to area one village can be having four or five see how it is basically going to the village level there is one village of joshis you say this is a village where only joshi brahmins live in that village technically everyone is a cousin everyone is cousin of each other right in this complete village now that complete village is worshiping one there is one kula devata for all of them in india there are many such villages on an average every state every state will have a major area in that major area there will be many sub areas and one sub area will have at least 15 to 20 villages all of these villages village people will have kula devatas their own so if you make a list of kula devatas it will be lakhs of kula devatas and the name will be all together different something that you cannot imagine even in your wildest dream because the names are generally in the local dialect so technically finding name of the kula devata is nearly impossible in fact this is only from jaini astrology where you can find which sect the person belongs to whether he is belonging to advaita vedant dvaita advaita vedant suddha advaita vedant madhva madhva vedant or whatever only using jaini astrology you can find it that only you can find it up to a particular level talking of today there are multiple sects you know someone is belonging to iskon someone is belonging to ramkrishna mission someone is belonging to paramahans yoga and then all of that you cannot trace for the time being and over the time multiple other sects will also come so rather than going by this approach that someone is wor- worshipper of vishnu someone is worshipper of krishna is easier as compared to going by this way because then multiple sects can come in the same manner regarding kula devata the point is now I, what i was saying one village will have everyone from the same family they will be ultimately cousins only from different different generations so they will have one kula devata and this is concept is same as grama devata as well the kula devata will be established as grama devata grama devata is the deity of the village protector of the village this is basically the kula devata itself but later on what will happen in the village other people will come some of them will like the place they will live there so they will have their own deity installed as the grama devata as the protector of the village and then slowly slowly this grama devata and kula devata will separate but all over india in every state at least there should be more than 10000 kuladevas because there are more than 10000 genealogies all over india you see there are many brahmans in south india many brahmans in north india many brahmans in west india many brahmans in east india and they don't match at all right one brahman is from uh, is you say das or ganguli this brahman from uh, this brahman from east india there is no das or ganguli brahman in north india west india or south india so when the brahman themselves have so many sub categories and now every ganguli brahman does not have one kula devata they have different kula devatas and there can be many 
So this particular point that you are going to find the name of the Kula Devata is a useless task. But every Kula Devata is basically a descendant from one prime God. Some Kula Devatas come from Vishnu. Some Kula Devatas come from Shiva. Some Kula Devatas come from Devi. Some Kula Devata, for technically, when you go in South India, all the Kula Devatas will somehow belong to Subramanya, Kartikeya, Murugan. In the end, they will all belong to these only. Because in South India, Murugan is Brahma. Brahma, you know, Brahma, the super soul. That is Murugan. You see, Brahma is Brahma. For them, Brahma is Sasta. Brahma is Murugan. Brahma is Kand is Brahma. So technically, in South India, all of them will have Kula Devata related to Skand. Karthike. But Bangalore also have res also have people who originally belong from Rajasthan. So of course there you cannot say that people living in Bangalore because they are South Indians, their Kula Devata is from their Kula Devata is related to Skand only that you cannot say. Because Rajasthanis are basically Devi worshippers. So their Kula Devata will be somehow connected to Devi. And you know what? The point of Kula Devata is so fascinating. That Devi can take incarnation as a male god. And the Kula Devata can be male god also. Okay. So simply put, according to me, you can find the Kula Devata is basically incarnation of which god in the prime gods category. You can be worshipping that god and it is equal to worshipping the Kula Devata. So as Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita that if you worship small gods, they can give you enjoyment, but they cannot give you emancipation. Now certainly enjoyment is also important. The concept of Kula Devata is very simple. The birth of a person, the birth of the person happens because of a blessing of a particular deity, that deity is Kula Devata. Secondarily, if you have problem in giving birth to child, because Kula means lineage. If you have problem in giving birth to a child, you will go to the Kula Devata, you will ask him a wish and he will make sure that your uh, lineage continues. And then whatever you need for the continuation of lineage, wealth, money, marriage, this Kula Devata can easily give you because he have to make sure that the lineage continues to grow. On the other hand, when Kula Devata becomes angry, there will be problems such as lacking money even for basic sustenance, even lacking home to live. And then other gods who are more, you know, who are more towards giving you uh, enjoyments may not take care of these. So Kula Devata have their own importance. And you cannot belittle the Kula Devata at all because enjoyment is necessary. You cannot do a mantra chanting empty stomach and bukhe bhajan na hoi gopala. I am very clear about it. And pehle, you should have something in life. Right. So Kula Devata is equally important. Kula Devata has been protecting your family since long, many years. They have to be protected. They have to be worshipped. You have to take care of the Kula Devata. Kula Devata will become angry. There will be fundamental problems in your life. Secondarily, I go by directions. I go by directions. That your Kula Devata belong to Shiva clan, Devi clan, Vishnu clan. And in this direction from your birthplace, there is temple of the deity. Okay. Now, whether you can go into that direction, you can find the temple or simply, as Krishna told in Bhagavad Gita, that if you worship the small gods, you can get enjoyment, but you cannot get emancipation. And if you worship me, you will get emancipation and worshipping me is akin to worshipping these deities. I always say in Mantra Shastra, there is a particular shloka. Sarvadeva Namaskaram Vishnu Prate Whichever deity you worship, all the worship goes to Vishnu only. He only distributes it to other gods. Right. So basic point is, your Kula Devata may be a uh, incarnation of Shiva. Taken as an incarnation of Shiva. Name can be any. Temple can be anywhere. If you start worshipping Shiva, Kula Devata will also be pleased because ultimately it is an incarnation of Shiva only. So whether you worship Ram or you worship Vishnu, it is one and the same. There is no differentiation into it. 
right? Now talking of Kula Devata, Kula means lineage. And where does the lineage comes from? Lineage comes from the 10th house. So lineage is coming from the 10th house. You This applies to the horoscope also. This applies to the Krishna also. Okay. Both places. So you are basically going to the 10th house and you have forgot your Ishta Devata. Sorry, you have forgot your Kula Devata. You don't know about your Kula Devata. How do you know that? 10th house is having which planet indicate ignorance? Malefics. Pap happens because of ignorance. So Malefics specifically Saturn, Gulika, these are connected to the 10th house or any Malefic, for example, Sun, etc. also are connected to the 10th house and they are not powerful. That basically means you don't know who your Kula Devata is. You've forgotten it. Right. Now you have to check the planet in the 10th house. You have to check the 10th law. If there is no planet in the 10th house, you will go by the 10th law. Otherwise, you will check planet in the 10th house. And this is the only place in Prashna also where you will go with lordship. In Prashna, though, generally, you will not go with lordship. But because you are going to use the same principle in natal chat also, in natal chat, you can go with lordship. Okay. Now, basically, planet in the 10th house will indicate the deity, the main deity whose incarnation is your Kula Devata. And other planets connected with him will indicate other details about the deity. Okay. So first of all, let's see the list. Sun himself is Narayan. Sun is himself a god. But generally incarnations of sun are not taken. So sun for this particular for that particular matter can indicate Shiva also can indicate Vishnu also. But 98% of the cases it indicates Vishnu only and not Shiva. Okay. So sun goes for Vishnu. Okay. Generally, strong sun, normal sun is Vishnu. Weak sun indicates Shiva is what I have seen. Okay. Venus is Devi. That is a married Devi. Like Parvati. Like Lakshmi. This married Devi comes from moon. Mars is Skand Murugan Kartikeya. In North India, it is Hanuman Bhairav. So incarnations of Hanuman Bhairav. Mercury will be Ram Krishna. In bigger sense, Vishnu. Rama, Krishna, Vishnu. So incarnations of either Rama, Krishna or Vishnu, basically you work any of them, you worship any of them, it is the same. Right? Jupiter is Shiva, pure. That's Shiva in the form of Shivling, pure Shiva. Venus is goddess but independence, like Kali Durga, independent goddess, goddess not worshipped with a husband. Independent goddess. Saturn indicates Brahma. Right, so incarnations of Brahma, this is generally natural, normal gods, you know, who find, like, for example, there is this particular deity, you know, this, uh, this is worshipped in any of the, there is, there is a god by the name of Barbarik, if you know, this is worshipped in Rajasthan. So this is a, this is a person, this was a person in the Mahabharata times who gave his head to Krishna. Right, and he's worshipped because of his great sacrifice. Krishna himself, you know, gave him a boon that you will be worshipped. So such gods which come from, you know, which are uh, which are made gods because of their heroic duties or because of their sacrifices are generally indicated by uh, Saturn. That is what Brahma indicates. But for the matter of worship, Saturn can also be equated to Shiva. Rahu goes to fierce, aggressive female goddess. Okay. So that will be once again Kali, Durga, Tara and all of that. Ketu goes to Shiva. So depending on if there is one planet in the 10th house, this planet will indicate the deity also. This planet will indicate the direction also, everything. 
If there is more than one planet, then the most powerful will indicate the DT. And the second most powerful will indicate the direction. Okay. So on and so forth. If with the 10th Lord, three planets are connected. One of them is the 10th Lord. Then leaving the 10th Lord aside, the remaining two planets, the powerful one will decide the DT. The second powerful one will decide the direction. Direction of planets, I have already told you. And Sun, East, Venus, South, East and all of that. So the planet connected with the 10th Lord or the planet in the 10th house, a DT related to that planet, that DT is Kula Devata and depending and based on the second planet, you should choose the direction, the temple of that DT in that particular direction is what is your Kula Devata. For example, in this particular horoscope, if the person wants to know about Kula Devata, first of all, we will check the Prashna and we will see that. 10th house, there is no major influence as such. The 10th Lord is Mercury that is situated with Rahu Jupiter. So technically most powerful will be Rahu only. In any case, if Rahu or Ketu are conjoined, they are the most powerful ones because they are points in the sky, not planets. So they are always powerful because Rahu, it will be an aggressive female goddess and because of Jupiter, the place of that aggressive female goddess will be northeast from the birthplace of the native and because it is a movable sign it will be much away generally movable sign will indicate you will have to cross a river to reach to the temple or you will have to go to another state another village to go to the deity dual sign indicates the same village but on the periphery and fixed sign indicates nearby very nearby but in that particular scenario if the person is born in his ancestral village itself, then the ancestral village. Otherwise, you have to trace the ancestral village. Then this is with reference to the ancestral village. Not with the, if you are living in Mumbai, this is not in reference to Mumbai. This is in reference to the ancestral village from where your family belonged to. So that you will have to find out. If you cannot do that in that scenario, this person can simply go rather than finding the temple of the Kuladevata because the 10th Lord Mercury is situated with Rahu that indicates an aggressive female goddess. As per his choice, he can start worshipping Durga, Kali, Tara, any of them. And he will please the Kula Devata also. Particularly if one wants to worship Kula Devata specifically and do not have the name etc. of the Kula Devata, then Om Kula Devata Bhyo Namah is a very simple mantra that anyone can chant and whatever may be the Kula Devata, they will be pleased by this particular mantra. Okay. Otherwise, if you know the name of the Kula Devata, Om Kula Devata, dash the name of the Kula Devata, Devi Devata Bhyo, based on the male or the female Devata, Namaha is the mantra that is technically used to appease them. The concept of Kula Devata is very simple. They have given all the resources to your, uh, to you, to, to your lineage. They have given birth to your ancestors and forefathers and they have given them enough money to sustain and they have given money, get money uh, to them to purchase those lands which you call now, today. So of course it is a bit natural to you know pray to them. Because if you don't pray Kula Devatas, they will make sure that your lineage do not continue. And secondary, your living becomes difficult. So they are very important to meet the basic necessities of life. They are important. To make sure that you have everything that is needed. They are important. So that's why you should worship them. Right? Another point is some people think that this Kula Devata is related to DNA etc. So I was telling this person that from astrology you can know about your Kula Devata. You can know in which direction the temple is there, then you can go and find. And, and everything happened by, and then he is coming with the thought that Kul Devata, someone told that Kul Devata is related to DNA. So Westerners generally do not have a Kul Devata as such, so are they not having DNA in their blood? Where is student who is a student who is a student who is a student who is a student? So there's nothing like this. Kula Devata is very important. But then saying that it is the DNA of the person. 
is too far fetched a dream right so don't go into this okay kul devata is very important that is okay but it is not a dna of us but very important understood the point very clear so kul devata should be there so, and gra uh -huh. so uh so if there is a planet in the 10th house with ketu now rahu has aspect so uh, ketu we consider jahan ketu hota hai wahan rahu ka aspect rahu ka नहीं लेते तब से नहीं लेते शुरुआत से ही नहीं ले रहे केतु का सेपरेट टिटी बताया तो शिवा राहु को कहीं पकड़ना केतु पकड़ो यस सर ओके शिवा है ना व्हेन वेयर एवर केतु इज सिचुएटेड डोंट टेक राहु एज पिकड देयर बिकॉज़ केतु इज देयर अदरवाइज इट विल कंफ्यूज मी So I somehow I don't know how I missed Shiva. So that's why I thought is it Devi. So, sorry, sir. Understood the point. Kul Devata this thing about there is one thing Gram Devata no protector of the village where you are living. And then now you are living in a modern village. So generally the place have a very big temple, biggest temple. You know Mumbai is having Ganpati. Complete Maharashtra is into Ganpati worship. So for any Marathi, Ganpati is the Gram Devata. South India is known for its Kanda worship. Specifically, the areas around Guru Vayur will will have Guru Vayur as the Chhatra Devata. Right. So this is basically the most prominent temple in your city. The most popular temple in your city is the Lord of the city. This is the most popular, most visited temple. So that is technically your modern Gram Devata. what the gram devata does it makes sure that you are peacefully living in the place many a times what may happen you may have money also you may have resources also but you may not be able to sit with peace in your own why because the lord of the place is angry he is not letting you stay at that place happily so for that you will have to please the lord of the place and for that you will have to find the most popular area most popular temple nearest to your home or in the same in the same area like if you are living in mumbai in mumbai the most popular temple and that you can do a google search you can find out is the lord of the place ishta devata i may have told you in some course other okay 